Ready to rock and roll. Let's go. Over to you, Melissa, for your case study. Sure. Uh, thanks, Henry. Uh, so this is my case study for product MBA cohort number six. Uh, so moving forward. Oops. Okay. So the problem statement that I went with was, we believe that aspiring female digital nomads are currently frustrated by being under constant fear and doubt about their safety and security. Derived from the hypothesis that women won't work remotely, but are afraid of doing it solo. The ideation exercise helped me narrow down on the understanding of who and why, and get an idea of how acute the problem was. So I did a little bit of research as a side to understand this because this was not a key market that I was into of the digital nomads and using the more consultancy partner. I kind of got the ratio of 67% of the male, male are actually nomads and just a small number of females are digital, <clears throat> female digital nomads. So moving on, after narrowing down on the targeted niche and we needed to hear if there were others in the market with the same problem and how they were solving it that actually formulated our first objective to see if this problem was actually market fit. So I use LinkedIn, I use uh, friends of friends and I use Facebook to try and reach out to this niche. <clears throat> I managed to get six interviews. Uh, four of them were aspiring female digital nomads and two of them were quite seasoned digital nomads. Uh, we compile all of this feedback into a mirror a whiteboard wherein we try to put down all their pain points, all their wish lists, uh, how they expected things to be like. And what we noticed, there was a common theme among all, all the women that I spoke to. It was about safety. It was how do they build trust being in this nomad land. And because they were all quite adventurous and they were on a tight budget. So it's like they wanted something that they could really resonate. Like, you know, I want to travel to Spain, but I want to be on a budget trip. So how do we actually do that? So, so moving on. So, I've never done this trick before, wherein we've actually taken the frustration and turned it into opportunities. So it was quite an insightful session for me. It's like, wherein you actually take somebody's pain points and you try and see what benefit you can give them. So it was really nice. So, and from this opportunity, it actually helped formulate a compiling product vision and a strategy that we went ahead with. <clears throat> As you can see, it did take me several times to get it, to get it right. Uh, I think I need a lot more practice in getting this because uh, it's quite because at the end of it, it is this statement, it is this vision that actually gets your market into your, into, your, into your hands. So after having this, the question was, did we actually connect with our niche with this vision and strategy? So we created a landing page uh, on Wix that formulated our MBO. What is an MBO? Is a minimum viable offer. And we attached a, uh, we attached a, uh, a survey on the back end of this. So it's like anybody that comes comes across onto the site, if they are, if it really resonates with them, they sign up, they become our beta testers, they fill up a little survey and we get a little bit more information for them. And it actually helps us to understand if like, you know, are we attracting the correct niche? I mean, I like to use a little analogy is like, you know, you go fishing out into the ocean, it's like if your bait is really tasty, you're going to get fish onto your hook. So, <clears throat> so the so from here on, we, I used the blue ocean strategy. I used the blue ocean strategy while I continued waiting. Uh, uh, sorry, just going back one point. Just uh, at this stage of point, I just had nine site visits and a 0% signed up with a 0% conversion. Even though my targeted uh, uh, platform, I kept using Facebook and Slack, Slack to continue reaching out to the audience. Uh, I used the blue ocean strategy uh, where I was uh, able to understand the companies what they were competing against, the terms of services, the features, uh, uh, and like, you know, the things that they were doing different, how, and in a place that, you know, where I could set myself apart from, from the crowd. The first iteration, I think, so I just wanted to be, I wanted to own the entire ocean. And I remember the guidance that you gave me is like, narrow down, stick on one key value, stick on one key differentiation. It's like, I still resonate, this can still hear your voice in my head with that. They use the story, they use the story, I think, so it's like, I am using it right now with my current work. It's like, it's one of the best frameworks where it takes you through from the current state of frustrations to observing the contributing factors and then pulling a transformation journey at the end of it. So it's like you go from start A to start B with addressing everything in between. Uh, I didn't change anything 
from my product vision because I was not getting much user feedback, but I continued my outreach campaign through Facebook, trying to go through friends of friends and uh, through Slack to see is like, can I get somebody to actually give me that one validation? The uh, objective three was to actually test to see if we are building uh, the value for the customer. So I kept beating my vision and strategy with the hopes of getting someone to at least click. Uh, it showed that my MBO didn't resonate. So I took that as a lesson for me that there's a lot of improvement, maybe in terms of the strategy, maybe in terms of the vision that I had to improvise. Uh, since I was already lacking a week behind in the class, I just went ahead with the class uh, to come back later to this. So at this stage, I was almost close on making another pivot. Uh, the three step, the product strategy, the 10 to 10 exercise, I've never done that before. It was quite fun, wherein you work on the problem, you work on the product and the strategy, and you're actually calling out the PMs from the next from the same cohort to help you come up with ideas. It's like you actually bring out bring out the team collaboration. So it's like a good lesson saying that you know pre product management is not a one person job. It's an entire team collaborative spirit that I go with. So we voted against the best ideas. We plotted them against the matrix to evaluate the actual impact versus the efforts of building certain features that ultimately formed the product strategy. Product strategy. We now had a roadmap inside. The lean, the lean canvas <clears throat> helped create a quick visualization of the problem, the solution, the competition, plus understanding the cost of doing the business. Hypothetically, just as a statement. Okay, uh, customer journey map is a great exercise. I've used this before, but never in this format, where you actually step into the customer's shoes, you walk the customer journey by identifying the customer goals, the actions they take, and the experience you're feeling. The journey map helped me a lot with the prototyping. <clears throat> I used a couple of reference, that is the digital nomad sites, uh, uh, trip advisors to actually formulate my thinking when I was building uh, uh, the wireframes. Objective four was to actually validate the prototype. And since I had zero signups, I continued my outreach to Facebook and Slack. And now, now I finally have three testers lined up for my product. I have them tested and I still have four waiting in line to test the beta product. So that's really nice. It's like something that really pumped me up to keep moving forward. So it's like, I never expected this, but I'm really getting momentum. So this is what my, uh, my uh, I mean, it's really small because I've zoomed it, but that's what my uh, Figma prototype looked like. I've got a 66.7% on, on a score that is like, you know, how disappointed that they would be. So I kept iterating based upon the user feedback. It felt really nice at this stage to finally get some momentum. I kept the prototype logic very simple. That is focused on the value proposition. That is the community, the budget, and the safety and security. Okay. So, and uh, as you can see, I am getting recommendation from these testers with like, you know, value proposition is like, can you add this? Can I recommend more friends to test the prototype? So it's like, it's going really well. Uh, quick key findings is things to improve is like they wanted, uh, they wanted to have more user stories that they could uh, relate to. They want sorry, Instagram. To, sorry to jump in. Yeah. You've, got, you've got lots of time still. So talk me through these and, you know, okay. take time, sorry. take a breath, take time. No, no, don't worry. Okay. I'm putting under time. Uh, I'm really interested to know what the, so just coming back to the process. So what, what did you feel was the core value from the testing? Because you mentioned there's a security element. There's this money, for example. Yeah. So, so, so the first iteration, the first user that I got. So the first yeah. user that, took me through the entire testing. The feedback was it's like, can I have more budget experience? Can I get okay. user stories that resonate? Or can I use the app yeah. to book something like a co-working space where I get discount because I'm using your app? Got it, got it, got it. And, okay, interesting. And it's like, and she said, if I write reviews, there was another thing that resonated. It's like, if I write reviews, I like my reviews to be open for everybody to use. So it's like, it. be it a male or be it a female. However, if you want to contact me, you can be only a female. It's like, I'd like to provide okay, that safe space. Okay, so, good. So, so from the first from the first testing, I iterated and took the safety and security only at the stage of where you want to get in touch with the community. So it's like the first page of like, you want to explore destinations, you want user feedback, you have all of that available. But if you want to connect the community, it's like, you need to be genuine, you need, need to go past through that validation part of it. So that's where things started turning around for me. 
got it. Okay, okay. So let's look at the sorry, so sorry to interrupt. Now let's go to the the specific learnings from okay. next. Slide. So so the so the learnings was this is the very first thing is like they were really curious and really excited about having an uh, authentication system because a lot of them had a little bit of story from the past that they kind of shared with me during the call. So the call was quite interesting and I felt their pain. So uh, the very first thing I think so is like build build a pro uh, a community base followed by building a authentication system and then trying and see is like you know how we can share those user stories out with the rest of the public uh the one thing that uh, they actually told me that actually makes sense they said for this market for this product to actually take to launch off i would need to have like a female face that drives this vision because then it actually captures the market and it actually makes sense. It actually makes sense uh, thinking about it. So it's like, for sure, it's like, I'm already out talking to some of these uh, female digital nomads and stuff, trying to see is like, you know, if they have the same understanding as me, is like, you know, where we collaborate is like, you know, I do the brainstorming is like, and then maybe they kind of push yeah, the yeah. vision out well, into the market. Yeah, great. You know, coming back to you, update your lean canvas as well and you can talk about partnerships there getting a you know a female digital nomad who's got a following already would be a great mm -hmm. partnership to make for example uh, so you do product they do the sort of the marketing funnel would be yeah. a really interesting approach so so yeah it's like i've already started, started reaching to on video i've already started speaking to these female digital nomads to see like you know what would it take to actually integrate this face verification application but i'm not investing anything right now is because only once i've invested the actual time into the market of building a prototype and seeing if people would actually want to pay for for something it's because having a face verification is a good to have but then at the end of it it's i want to see the return on investment is like am i getting so many subscriptions coming in to pay for the verification tool in place so that is something that is still kept on the open end so uh, moving, uh, sorry, any more questions, Henry? Yeah, okay. So so moving on, these were some of the the feedback that I uh, actually try to translate into a short-term roadmap is like, you know, authentication system, inspirations, female speakers to share their ideas, uh, cheap budget destination so that, you know, it's very comfortable they can use hostel because right now, one of the feedback they gave is like, these female digital nomads, they they are on a minimum salary. They want to travel the world, but then they have they are forced to stay in hotels, which is quite expensive. So it's like they wanted budget experience at the same time enjoying the destination. So it really made sense. And finally, it's like get a female to be the face of the app. So it's like that's what I'm trying to do. Is like you know who else I can contribute? Is like I'm interviewing people to see like would it really make sense? Evaluating the pros and cons. <clears throat> Putting this on a roadmap is. The community side beta build an authentication system and then finally getting a customizable drip based user review uh, formulation out onto the market uh, so this is what finally based upon the feedbacks how my vision translated and my product uh, strategy also took a tweak because based upon this is like the product vision was reclaim your space and it kind of sent ripples down to the nomads where now they are kind of lining up and i've called it a peer-to-peer -peer community built and supported by female digital nomads so it's like and i've used like that's the first uh, screen of the app that on on figma okay so finally the process is uh, go ahead with data rather than opinion use stick with the uh, values rather than features uh listen listen more talk less uh, keep keep it to storytelling rather than being very narrated, okay? And uh, yeah, avoid code at all costs and stick to the first principles of delivering value to the customer. And how did we build this all through? We went through a process of first understanding what exactly was the problem, who our target customer was and what they wanted. We went through the ideation of actually converting those frustrations into opportunities. Building out an MBO, uh, that is a landing page package with the opportunities, package with the strategy to see if like, you know, were we attracting the correct niche? It's like, I like, 
I think I've labeled the MBO as a fishing rod and the fish for me because it quite simply takes me back like, you know, is it real? Uh, finally, the prototype, instead of spending time and money building hardcore prototypes, a quick and easy wireframe gives you the insights like, you know, is it actually resonating with the market? Is it rare? Uh, are you able to connect to the niche? Finally, uh, the learnings was uh, listen to the customer uh, and keep delivering what they want and uh, keep iterating based upon the feedback. And finally, it's uh, invest only once, once we have a strategy and validate it and keep measuring, keep building, keep measuring, keep building until you get what the customer wants. Uh, finally, my one problem statement before I entered uh, product MBA was, uh, I come in with no product ex experience. In wait, eight weeks, I've taken an ideation to a solution. Learning key, concept, learning key concepts around importance of an MBO, root cause analysis, design thinking, customer obsession, and prioritization. Uh, I'd be reiterating the entire process another twice or thrice to cement the knowledge and my understanding. So going back is like, how do I, how do I take an idea to a solution? It's a tick box for frameworks. Do I work? It's like you've armored me with tons of frameworks. What skill should I have? It's, I was skeptical and I remember right, right from the beginning is I kept asking is like, should I be technical enough? I think I've gone through the entire process of like designing, understanding what a designer goes through, understanding, creating a database of understanding, you know, like what an engineering goes, like not in detail, but at least a perspective of what they do. And uh, how do I make, what do I do to make X product successful? It's like the finally is the PM uh, score is like measure, build, measure, build. So it's like, I've got the ideation, I've got the entire framework ready for me now to go. And finally, uh, my name is Malza. I'm a passionate, aspiring product manager with a focus of building and delivering great products for a better customer experience from a customer's perspective. Good, awesome. Thank you. Very, very, very good case study, honestly. Um, good, you. I'm gonna bang, just go through some quick feedback on the case study and then we can talk about just some general points to sort of think about moving forward. Um, I love your problem statement at the beginning. I thought it was really clear. Um, honestly, Jen, the whole thing was really good actually. Your so the problem statement was clear. The what you call bridging was really strong. I think it was excellent. Um, for example, you said after narrowing down on the niche, we folk we tried to understand if other people had this. So we set an objective. Objective one of dot dot dot. So you bridge from problem statement into this next slide, and you are for me. It's always I'm always trying to think. Would this be you know? Would would I would is this clear to me if I know nothing about product? And there was a narrative that was really clear. I'm like, okay, I understand why you're showing me this objective now because it's come from this problem, and you know, there's a narrative that everything's connected. That was very good. One of, easily one of the best of the cohort. Again, really clear narrative from the objective to the key result to then you showing me the discovery cause. You gave some nice little examples of common frustrations as well. So that was excellent. Exactly how we want to present and tell stories. Bridge, give a clear narrative and some examples. Uh, nice. I love you know, I love that you're sharing your learnings as well. I think that's really important when you're pitching to stakeholders, you know, you should because you're sort of showing the value of product discovery. You know, it's really interesting to see when we flipped a problem to an opportunity, actually, how that worked. So again, it's really sort of showing this story. Um the only criticism I have is take a deep breath. I know I think you you suddenly went shit. I've only got 50 minutes and went into like I need to fast forward mode. So you're on like 120% speed. If this is literally the only thing I could improve from that is just a little bit more slowly. Take breaths. Right. So you're not going to add on loads of time, but just adds a bit more emphasis, it can be a little bit more calmer. There's times to speed up and then there's times to emphasize, say like the vision. You want to mm -hmm. pause bold, confident, deeper voice, these kind of things. So only thing is, is the delivery. The, so the word choice is excellent. The storytelling is excellent. Just that sort of the drama of it. Uh, um, I suddenly realized I had only two minutes to complete. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> no, yeah, Dora, it's Dora. You had time, you had time. So on the MVO, um, you, this is the only part where I, did, I didn't feel you, the storytelling was a little bit weaker because you sort of said, so we did the MVO, the minimal viable offer. But what is what is that actually? What is the minimal viable? What are you trying to do with that? Later, you came on and said, you know, it's a way of attracting the right people. And I love that analogy of fishing. 
But just at the beginning, when you introduced, so, you know, so our next objective was to really understand that, do we have something people are interested in? We came up with something called a minimal viable offer where basically we wanted to really quickly just see, are people interested in this offer? Think of it like fishing. We throw something out and see if we attract people. Simple as that, one sentence. And, and then as a listener, you go, oh, I get what, what Meltz is talking about now. I get why he's now showing me these key results and frameworks. That was the yeah. only time you didn't do that. You did that actually in the beginning really, really well. Uh, Blue Ocean, excellent. You said what it is, why it's important to set ourselves apart, differentiation. Give some examples there always as well. Um, objective three. Yeah, it, it's it's completely fine to share failures. I thought it was great. You, you know, you've got some good learnings. Look, we put something out. We actually just got zero percent interest, but we learned that we had to pivot. You showed later by getting results later on that the value of that pivot and again of the process that we're you're implicitly selling this process to whoever's listening because you're just showing that it works. Customer journey map was excellent, 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 excellent. You gave just a very clear explanation of it, what it is, why it's important without going too detailed as well. Um, and test it. And it was also just, you know, for me, and obviously for you, just to see that you, you pushed on and actually did go and test it and got really good results is the best possible thing that can ever happen because it just shows what that does is plant a seed in your mind that if you keep pushing and keep pivoting, something will work eventually. So as an aspiring entrepreneur, you know, as a product leader, that is that conviction is so important because so many people give up just before something starts working so that you're going to look back on that as a really powerful moment i think in your your product career it might be a this year might my, be five years ten third, years even this was my third iteration remember the first one was the flat feet problem exactly then exactly. the introverts and now the females <laughs> And also you said the quality of the ideas were better because, you know, I was pushing hard on the other ones. Like, you know, they weren't, it wasn't up to scratch. They weren't clear for me. And it was clear. There was lack of clarity in your assignments, which, which comes from lack of clarity in your thinking of not being actually super clear on what you wanted to do. So that when you came to the third one, all clicked into place because you were clear on it. You'd had the practice. You sort of knew what was important and what wasn't important. And um, yeah, I, you know, I think that's my, the, the, the sort of point I'll leave on really is when you focused and sort of had that clarity with this, this third idea, everything clicks into place. And I'm not sure where, whether it was, is it lack of experience? Was it just some self-doubt that, that sort of clouded your thinking in the first, you know, five, six weeks? I'm not sure where that comes from, but I think, you know, now that you've got a good repetition, just to keep that in mind at all time, right? That focus. When we blue ocean, don't try and do everything. Don't let your mind become scattered and, and panicked and try and do too many things. Just stay very clear on right, what's the one or two things that are important and ignore everything else. And it's great that you've now got a repetition that you've seen that it is valuable in practice. So take that forward, that focus. I think second thing is, as you've already said, stick to the frameworks, keep putting them into practice. You're bringing people into the conversation. You're obviously someone that likes that, you know, that you love that, as you said, that, that workshop where we get, where you get used to work with someone else around solutions, 10 for 10. If you're someone like that, awesome. Bring people into all of these conversations, these workshops, whether it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is. Um, so if you, if you sort of just, yeah, focus, keep getting these frameworks and, and collaborate, then, um, yeah, you've got a bright future in product. Definitely. Thank you so much for getting me arm up with, with this. Uh, it's been a long, long overdue, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's especially, especially with yeah. regards to time management is like, I know I procrastinated with so many other projects, but actually I stayed put and like stuck to the end then. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I mean, you worked hard. Build like, this. Tell you it's it's like, yeah, it's like after this, after this, I'm going to get my hands sorted out. It's like I didn't want to get anything in between because I didn't yeah, want to yeah. lose focus on this. It's like, I know it's great. That. It's it's great. It's hard at the time, but you know, you got to push yourself at times. And I think it's great that you did because it would have been so easy to give up and not get those results that you did at the end. So I think that's that's great to see. And as I said, you just you can't go wrong in life if you've got that mindset. You know, keep pushing, but keep learning at the same time, and you'll eventually things will work themselves out. 
Yeah, I mean, something. I can't say thank you enough. Thank you for thank you enough for teaching me how to fish. I think I'm going to go ahead and go back to the ocean and now learn to fish yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm yeah, going to awesome. do at least two or three more iterations. And, yeah, good, good, uh, good. What exactly. I plan on doing is like yeah. once I'm comfortable with like two or three iterations, that's when I start looking out for a product role because I yeah. want to be at least a little bit more confident in terms because I'm coming yeah. in with zero experience in product. Yeah, and yeah. It was quite intimidating during the course, working with the rest, like people that had at least a few months. So it's like, Okay, yeah, push yeah. me. I I stayed I tasted what uncomfortable tasted like. So yeah. I just want to do a two or three more iterations. So it's like I, I think I'm more familiar in using this. I think that okay. makes complete sense. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Go through the whole thing once, twice, three times, and um, you can use that as a really strong springboard. And you never know, right? You 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 might come across a a really strong MBO that you you build out further as well. So yeah. Yeah, Bullet Melts, honestly, congrats. I think it's great to see the hard work paid off, actually, at the end. Thank you so um, much for everything, Henry. Thank you for being no, no a good mentor. Honestly, it's been, been, been great having you on the programme. And um, look, keep me updated. I think let me know exactly what you're doing with these, these ideas. I'm always happy to hold you accountable a little bit, just check in over sure. Slack as well. Greg, well, look, congrats uh, as well just on would, graduate. Just one last yeah, thing. Sure. Would, sure. After this call, would, would I be losing access to the current uh, No, no, no. Learning you got access no. okay. forever. Yeah. Okay. The rest of your life until we close right. company. Nice. <laughs> access I like to the new Slack website. I, well. I like the new website layout there. It looks really classy oh, nice. for the black background. Yeah. Nice. Good, good, good. Yeah, that's it's uh we're slowly getting results coming in from it. So it's looking good. But also we'll let Mel say congratulations. Right. I'm gonna send you right now on Slack your certificate. Um cool. so you can post that. Um I'd post it now, actually, whilst people are still at work. It just gives you a nice bit of exposure. You never know who's looking. You might be hiring mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And uh, congrats as well. Well. And we'll stay in touch over Slack as well. Good. Thank you so much. Have, have a, a lovely good weekend, weekend as well. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye.